back! It's me again! So, guess what? I have more questions <laughs> from my friend, which is <laughs> Bama, Bama, is it Bama Quest? Alabama, it's Alabama, Bama Quest. Uh, it was Horror Queen, but um, she changed her name on me, and um, which I love. If, if you like eating channels, and if you love, like, hiking and stuff like that, you will love Bama Quest because, you know, my friend does, mm, not my friend friend, but, yeah, I know how that is. My, my internet, my, my acquaintance, somebody that, that I think is amazing, her and her husband have this channel, and uh, she started out as Horror Queen, and that was one of my influences that I forgot to mention. And, uh, The Gothic Kitchen Witch, I think it was originally titled. And, uh, so now we have more questions. So I have to answer some more questions for you. One of them is my favorite seasonal Starbucks drink. Pie, anything pumpkin spice. Hubby likes black coffee. I like pumpkin spice. So I can't wait for their pumpkin spice to come out. The other question was, if I had to choose any fictional vampire, who would it be? Um, <laughs> I'm biased. I'm really biased. Honest, honestly, I'm biased because I would have to say my own. Um, if I had to choose, I would say Black, just because Black is, is very important to me. He's one of my most amazing characters that I've done. So I'm a little biased on that one. Uh, Lestat, I love the Vampire Chronicles. And Louis and Lestat have always been close to my heart. So hubby chose Nosferatu. And I like Nosferatu, but I'm definitely an Anne Rice fan. So I, I gotta like go with Anne Rice. But if I had to choose, I'd be like, my own? And then, how could I forget? I can't forget Zilla and nothing and Twig and Molokai. I can't forget Lost Souls because they were vampires, but they were different vampires. They weren't your typical vampires. Uh, they were born that way. They weren't created. So, Puppy Z Bright did a whole world on on take different take on those vampires. Uh, I made my didn't make it, but I wrote my book because I wanted to directly like I wanted to do anti Twilight. When I started writing Twilight was huge, so I wanted to do my own take. I was like I I I my vampires want to eat you. They don't want to date you. I missed the, the blood and guts in your face, angry vampire. I missed it. I loved the old 80s movies. Uh, to Die For, To Die For 2. Um, God, Lost Boys. And I'm missing a whole bunch of movies. Fright Night. I love Fright Night. Um, schlocky, any schlocky vampire movie, it was just it. That was it. So when, when Twilight came around, I was like, what? What? What is this? I mean, I know people love Twilight, but I just wasn't into Twilight. And then we had the Sookie Stackhouse. Okay, my dog is named Sookie, but... um. Don't hold that against me. <laughs> no. I love True Blood. True Blood is right up my alley. The character of Pam is basically my role-playing character Jade. Um, watching the character of Pam on True Blood, I was like, 
They stole my ideas. They stole my ideas. They stole my character. No, no, they didn't. They didn't. Everyone, everyone steals from everybody. So it's, it's still weird to see, like, you write something and you, and I wrote it first, but I don't live in Hollywood and I'm not a Hollywood mogul, so I don't have access. And, uh, a lot of my ideas were borrowed. And I'm pretty sure we all have the same ideas. It reminds me of the guy that hid in Stephen King's attic and insisted he wrote Misery. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we all kind of have similar ideas. And um, I see a lot of my stuff. And lately, I see a lot of like twins, white hair, white skin, white twins. I'm like, no similarity there, is there? No, not at all. So, yeah. There's, there's a lot of things where I'm like, I'll see a TV show or a movie or something, and I'll be like, that is my book. That is what I wrote. That is my idea, and they stole it. You know, I did it ten years before everybody else did, but... I don't have connections. Uh, I went the independent publishing route. So, you know, I'm an indie writer. I, I'm an outrage writer. I write things that make people mad. Because nowadays you just can't do anything without pissing somebody else off. So, uh, I don't know if I've said this before, I might have, I feel like my book is cursed. Uh, if you buy it, beware, because things happen. Um, anytime I write about somebody, or I write about an animal, or I write about a character or something, it, it just, it goes down. I used real life pets, and they've all passed away. Uh, I talked about Peter Steele and shortly after he passed away, I've talked about a couple of things. There's, there's so many coincidental tiny little things that I'm like, oop, book curse struck again. And I'm not saying that because I want to sell a haunted book. I'm not. I thought about not writing anymore. I'm like, I'm not going to write. I'm done writing because the second book, I based a character off of Ghost from Motionless and White. And of course, three, two, three weeks later, he quit the band and was done. And I was like, oops, I'm sorry. I wrote your character. I didn't mean to. Um, yeah. So, haha, -ha, the book is cursed. Don't pick it up. Don't read it. And I'm writing a sequel. So, yeah. I mean, there's just been, there's been too many coincidences. Uh, there's a storyline where Jack, my character Jack, used to own a carnival and run a carnival while then the, one of the carnivals shut down. It wasn't Ringling, it was the other one. I can't remember what carnival, but uh, it was the other one. They decided to stop being a carnival. Um, I'm so rambly. There's so much. There's just a lot. Uh, Maddie, my friend Will from work. I work with this man named Will. And I've always wanted him to have this amazing supportive boyfriend, so I made him one. And... He was dating a guy named Matt, and that Matt got in a car accident after I had written that the Matt in the book had been taken out by the vampires. So, I don't know if you believe in curses, but I have said multiple times that I'm going to send my book to Zach Baggins at the Haunted Museum and be like, First book, you can have it, I'm done writing. I'm not writing anymore, I'm done. And of course then everybody jokes and says, hey, you should write a book about Trump. 
you know, get him out of office. And yeah, no, coincident, coincidental. Like, I know a lot of people don't believe in, in ghosts. They don't believe in coincidence. They don't believe in anything. They're, and that's cool. That's fine. This whole video was going to be about my living in a haunted house or a haunted apartment. And it kind of like deviated, deviated. So maybe the haunted apartment story should be later. I should talk about books and book characters and vampires. And I've been obsessed with vampires since I was like... Oh gosh. I mean, small. Okay. I, I know what it was now. I remember. Not good. My parents took me and my sister, and I had to have been like seven, eight. My sister was like ten. We went to see uh, Andy Warhol's Vampire, was it? I can't remember. All I remember is the guy puking blood in the bathtub. I remember it. It's like vivid. It is so vivid in my head that I just... I, and my sister just, like, hated it. She she was traumatized, and I was just like, why is there a man puking blood in the bathtub? Because he couldn't drink virgin blood? I don't remember. I have no recollection of, like, why he couldn't drink blood. Or what made him sick. I don't remember. Can someone tell me? Because I don't recall. But, yeah, we went to the theater to see it. Speaking of... My father took us to see The Wall, Pink Floyd's The Wall, when I was 10 because we couldn't get in to go see E.T., so he decided we should go to The Wall. Well, of course, that traumatized my sister because the kids falling into the meat grinder, and I was young enough that I was just, like, confused and not sure what was going on. Um, bad parenting choices, maybe? Dad? I don't know. Um, so yeah, I kind of grew up watching horror, watching vampires, watching spooky, scary movies. Uh, it's been a part of my life forever. I loved it. I loved scary movies. I loved being scared and spooked and, and hearing ghost stories. And, and uh, My grandmother would tell me a story about going into the woods in Oregon, they were mushroom hunting, and she found a Bigfoot. There was a Bigfoot in a cabin, and she woke it up, and it, like, roared at her, and it ran away, and, of course, I couldn't stop talking about it, and then my parents were mad because I wouldn't shut up about it. So, I've always been fascinated by ghosts and aliens and spooky things. Um... My cousins had a haunted house. They owned a home in Springfield, or not Springfield, <laughs> Springfield, Minnesota. Spring Valley. Ugh. Spring Valley, Minnesota. Uh, it used to be the old stagecoach stop, and that is where the Laura Ingalls Wilder Museum is. Um, because that's where Alonzo's family was from. So they had, they owned the house that used to be the stagecoach house, where the stagecoach would pull up, and it would be the, I don't know. But Mrs. Cavanaugh was the ghost, and I was terrified of this ghost that lived in their house. And when I was six, I saw this white shape go through the end of the bed. And my mother told me, no, no, you didn't see anything. And I was like, no, I, I saw this shape. And she's like, no, you were dreaming. Go back to bed. And to this day, I know what I saw. I saw a woman, a figure of a woman, in an old-time dress, go through the end of the bed. I've always been fascinated by this story. And apparently, before my uncle passed away, he, uh, he was in a coma for a while, and he went home and he was trying to recover and like he had a tugging war with the sheets where he would pull the sheet up and the sheet would get pulled down and he would pull it up and the sheet would get pulled <laughs> um, I, My cousin thinks the ghost was still with her for quite a while. 
Uh, my uncle saw her, Mrs. Kavanaugh, before they moved out. So I was always kind of scared of this house, but nothing ever spooky happened to me. Because I slept with my parents. <laughs> As a 21 year old, I slept with my parents in the bed because I was like, nope, no ghosts, they're not gonna happen. I'm gonna sleep with you guys. And so nothing spooky happened. Although I think I had a Ouija board in my suitcase, which is crazy, I should have like. Nowadays, everybody does the whole Ouija board, voice box, everything, you know. Find something on your phone and do it, you know. Do the scary games. And I just, I'm not into that. I'm kind of scared of what would happen if I did that. Because I have things happen to me naturally anyways. Uh... I've always had things happen to me. I've always had paranormal experiences. And I know people don't believe this stuff and that's fine. I've had things happen to me that I can't explain. My friends lived in a trailer where she used to tell me that her furniture was moved around. She used to tell me about banging on the walls and I didn't believe her. I was like, whatever. So my friend and my other friend we went to go stay there. I was like, fine, we're going to spend the night. And of course, I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> I'm in the bathroom. And bam, bam, bam on the trailer wall. Like somebody was outside banging on the trailer wall. And I'm screaming. I'm like, oh my God. And so my other friend comes running in the bathroom. And she's got a freaking butcher knife. A butcher knife. And the other friend has a steak knife. And they're like, what? And I'm like, outside and so we all go outside and one friend goes this way one friend goes that way nobody there was nobody there my friend and her boyfriend break up and she leaves and she used to tell me that her little boy used to sit and talk to somebody in the hallway well they they moved out and so i was there with the ex uh hanging out and he had a beer on the counter, and his beer was here, and there was a bag of ice. And his beer slides past the bag of ice, down to the end of the counter, and the ice in the bag shoots out of the bag. <laughs> All across the counter, just <laughs> in front of me, and I'm like, what? Okay, okay, cool, whatever. Cool, dude, whatever. Uh... There was a story about a pumpkin. There was a big pumpkin on the counter and the pumpkin wobbled and like almost fell and hit the child that was on the floor. Uh, my friend was, and apparently it hated the ex-boyfriend. It hated him. It hated him. He was, I was doing tarot on the bed. I'm flipping tarot cards and I'm reading his tarot. And he had a drink in his hand, and the drink literally, like, popped up and hit him in the face. Like, phew, like somebody had walked up to him and bumped the cup, like, phew, like, bumped it into his face and, and soaked his face. And, and I was like, okay, somebody didn't, whoever was there didn't like him. My ex-husband saw a big, large man walk out of the bedroom and thought it was his brother, and his brother was in the other room. That trailer was creepy. That trailer was really freaky. Like, I... I don't know. Uh, but I've had many, 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 many things happen to me. That if you can spend three hours hanging out with me talking about ghosts, we can. So... And I'm sorry if you don't believe in them, but I've had too many things happen that I just can't explain. Uh, they like to say that people who can see them or notice them or feel them are like a beacon, so spirits are drawn to them. And pass. Uh, just, we collect energy. And so it would make sense that Spirits would want to, I don't know, get a hold of us or contact us because we're more in tune 
we're not shutting them out. And I don't go to cemeteries, and I don't, I've been to one, and I haven't been back, because it was creepy. I, just, I had a red orb flat in my face, like a, this big giant orb, like a big red orb, just at my face, and I had my husband take a picture, because I was like, you need to take a picture this way, because... You know, I mean, I've talked about it before. I've seen my kiss toys. My kiss toys that were on, like, they were tilted, like, back here on a dresser. They, I went to go do laundry. I went to bring the laundry in, and the kiss toys were floating in midair. Like, one was on the floor, and the other one was hovering, and it just, like, boop. And I turned around and left. I was done. I lived in a haunted apartment where the cupboards were open constantly and everybody was like, why don't you film it? And I'm like, film what? Like, I'm not going to set a camera up to catch nothing because I didn't, it could have been the cats. I was like, no, I don't care. Um, you know, I don't know. We had weird things happen. The, the curtains in that house, we had those weird, uh, curtain divider thingies and they would slide open like somebody goes looking out and they would slide shut. Um, I had I had a mental image of a guy standing behind the couch, behind us, and there were cold spots. And my husband's phone flew off the counter and one time I was watching Ghost Hunters. The ghost, yeah, Ghost Hunters. I was watching Ghost Hunters and husband, uh, hubby comes out and says, you know, the sink in the bathroom. Why do you have the sink water full blast? And I'm like, I don't. He's like, yes, you do. And I'm like, I don't. And uh, it was. The sink was like full blast. Well, that could be anything. That could be pipes. Um, I've had cat toys roll across the room when no one is there. I made a joke one time because I was lazy and my pop, my pop was sitting like on the couch. And I was lazy, so I was like, hey, ghost, whoever you are, can I have my pop? Can you bring me my pop? Well, there was a bowl of cat food sitting on the couch behind me because I had picked it up. It was, I don't know why. I have no idea why. Why was, <laughs> I don't know. The cat food, for some reason, was on the back of the couch. And I wanted my drink, and I was like, hey, ghost, bring me my drink. And this bowl of cat food flipped off the couch into my, into my, into me, into my neck. Like, I was sitting on the couch, and the food would have been, like, behind me, and it flipped up into me, like, the bowl, like, flipped up into me. So the ghost was like, F you, lady, get your own freaking drink. We had a ghost cat. We named Milk. Um, I believe I brought flowers for the ghost because I was like, well, I'm going to bring some spring flowers in here just to, like, you know, make things nice. Uh, right before we left, we had the freezer door was open when we came home, and I was so angry because I was like, all my meat was unfrosted. You ruined all my meat, and I was just bitching up a storm. And I was trying to clean, I was going to vacuum. And this giant Snoopy doll, big Christmas Snoopy doll, big, was on top of my curio cabinet. And this giant, giant Snoopy doll flipped off at me, like flew at me. And I was like, oh no, no, you're not going to throw things at me because you opened my fridge. I was so mad. And my husband, who was sitting at the table, around the corner from the fridge so I couldn't see it because there was like a wall between us. So I'm in the hallway and hubby was at the table and the fridge is over here in the kitchen and the freezer door comes open by itself and hubby saw it. He was like, oh my god, the fridge is open by itself. And I'm like, again? <laughs> we even mentioned it to our landlord, whoever, 
like the management people, we mentioned it to them and we were like, by the way, if we sign this lease, you need to know what's going on. Because it was just too weird. There was too many weird things going on in that apartment that I was like, I'm losing my mind. Or we have a ghost. And they were like, yeah, there's been activity in other buildings, not yours. And I'm like, sure. Okay. So when we moved out, I was like, you can come with us, but you need to behave. You need to chill. You can be in the basement and hang out. But you can't be upstairs. And I find this is the best thing to do. When, when you have spirit activity, if you just treat them like people, and you talk to them like they're people, and just be like, dude, you can have the basement. This is my domain. That's your domain. Stay there. Um, I burn a lot of sage. I burn incense, just kind of like clean the space. I, um, you know, I, I'm an empath, I get these feelings, I connect to people, I connect to people's family members, and uh, I, I hate bringing it up and talking about it, because it's just, it's weird. I'm not comfortable yet with it, so. A lot of strange things have happened in my life, but I suppose... We could talk more about that later. I have rambled on way too long. But thank you for the good questions, my friend. Bama Quest, is it? Yeah. No. I, I'm, I'm very, very happy and very, you know, I'm very happy and supportive of people that, that like, want to, like, evolve and change their stuff up and, and do different things. It's like awesome. It's like cool. You don't want to be in a rut. You know, you want a different audience. You want new things and that's awesome. I'm stuck in spooky town. So, I have rambled long enough. But that is my spooky stories. And um, if you want to know more, let me know in the comments below. And we'll talk to you later. Stay spooky. Bye.